हेलो वेलकम टू लेक्चर 25 फाइव ऑफ द कोर्स दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर फोर ऑफ मॉड्यूल थ्री इन दिस लेक्चर उल डिस्कस द क्लासिकल रेजिम ऑफ केविटी क्वांटम ऑफ मेकानिक्स दिस विल एनेबल आस एंड इट विल हेल्प अस टू एप्रिशिएट द क्वांटम रेजिम लेटर ऑन सो लेट अस बिगिन इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड हाउ वन कैन ऑप्टेन information regarding what's going on inside the cavity by the so called displacement readout as the optomechanical system is an interferometer it is easy to measure the phase shift suffered by the circulating light inside the cavity as uh, the phase shift is dependent on the displacement as you can see from the expression that we discussed in the last class Uh, the phase shift is dependent on displacement and it it is inversely proportional to the cavity decay rate kappa so one can essentially work out all the essential details we found that measurement of phase shift leads to the displacement versus uh, time plot which can give us an idea about the temperature of the harmonic oscillator just from the amplitude of fluctuation Uh, it turns out that uh, it is wise to look at the noise spectrum of the harmonic oscillator and also we found out that uh, this noise spectrum which is here given by ssx that's a function and uh, this noise spectrum is nothing but it is the fourier transform of the correlator which we discussed in detail in the last class and uh, this fact that the fourier uh, the noise spectrum is a fourier transformation of the correlator is also called uh, also known as the wiener kinsin theorem uh, then we went on to discuss the so called fluctuation dissipation theorem and it's basically a relationship between the noise spectrum and the linear response of the system and linear response is characterized by a quantity called mechanical susceptibility as as we know that the displacement of the movable mirror in an optomechanical system is directly proportional to the uh, radiation pressure force and this proportionality factor is the so called linear susceptibility and uh, fluctuation dissipation theorem connects this linear susceptibility uh, with the quantum noise spect uh, sorry simply the uh, noise spectrum and uh, this noise spectrum as you can see uh, from this expression here it is related to this noise spectrum ssx is related to the imaginary part of the susceptibility an imaginary part of the susceptibility is related to dissipation of the mechanical system and this expression is actually in the classical domain then we have a expression for the quantum regime also and we discussed uh, this in the problem solving session in little bit in detail that uh, at very high temperature limit this quantum expression uh is actually essentially boils down to the classical expression and of course that should be the case then we applied the fluctuation dissipation theorem to a classical damped harmonic oscillator in very straight uh, calculations so we can da uh, we can do in the frequency domain and from there we can find out the expression for the susceptibility and uh, we get the expression for the susceptibility from the expression we get the imaginary part of the susceptibility and as we know the imaginary part of the susceptibility is related to the uh, noise spectrum via this fdt and we are discussing in the classical domain only and uh, we get the expression for the noise spectrum and under the situation where the dissipation is small enough and if we expand Uh, or work out or simplify this expression uh, basically around the frequency around the resonance frequency then we get this very simple expression and this expression if we plot then we get this typical plot which already we got uh, earlier uh, in our qualitative discussions and from this uh, plot noise spectrum plot we can 
uh, derive immediately a lot of information such as the resonance frequency of the harmonic oscillator, oscillator the damping rate gamma and also the temperature of the harmonic oscillator just by working out the area under the curve now we embark on our study on the classical regime of cavity quantum optomechanics uh, because this is going to help us in understanding the quantum regime better so now we are going to discuss classical regime of cavity quantum optomechanics in the classical limit limit uh, we will replace the position operator x cap by the corresponding classical variable x on the other hand the light field which is generally denoted by this annihilation operator in quantum mechanics this is going to be replaced by the parameter alpha which refers to the so called coherent state and you know that the coherent state is the most classical state of harmonic oscillator so alpha basically refers to coherent state okay and we already know that in the quantum regime light which is an electromagnetic field behaves like a harmonic oscillator so this is essentially the uh, regime that we are going to discuss the key thing to remember is that x cap the position operator is going to be replaced by the variable x and the annihilation operator who is refers to the quantized electromagnetic field or here in this case light which is an electromagnetic field is replaced by the parameter alpha who is refers to the coherent state now the equation of motion will be in terms of this parameter x and this alpha and there are two parts one is the mechanics part and another one is the light part and we are going to consider only one single mode of light now coming to the talking about the mechanical mirror which is attached to a spring that is the movable uh, mirror of the fabric pair cavity it could be modeled as a damped harmonic oscillator and attacked upon by a radiation pressure force and which is due to the light field and we have already discussed about the damped harmonic oscillator that equation of motion to, uh, in the last class so here let me write it again the mechanics part is going to be described by the uh, this classical damped harmonic oscillator model so in that case we have this equation of motion so m x double dot plus m capital omega square x then we have m gamma x dot and now we are having only the radiation pressure force which is actually you know that this is nothing but h cross omega by l mod alpha square okay on the other hand what about the light mode and as i say as, as i am saying that i am just going to consider only one mode of uh, light so light mode would be described by just you know that we earlier discussed that how this annihilation operator uh, evolves in time so the equation of motion for the annihilation operator is this say a dot is equal to minus i omega this is the optical frequency within the cavity and then you have this initial this thing right just maybe better i say that we know that a of t is equal to a of 0 e to the power minus i omega optical this is the optical resonance frequency of the cavity okay this is what we know so based on this uh, we have this equation now because this annihilation operator is replaced by the parameter alpha so we can write alpha dot is equal to 
minus i omega optical the, but this is now modified due to the movable mirror so this would be 1 minus x by l alpha okay and apart from that we'll have other two terms that i'm now going to discuss one is this decay term of the optical field decay is happening uh, at the rate kappa uh, amplitude is decaying at the rate kappa by 2 and the intensity will decay at the rate kappa and apart from that there is another term which i am going to explain soon that would be kappa by 2 alpha say max e to the power minus i omega l t omega l is the laser frequency now before i go further let me again clarify this how this particular term is coming because we have already we know that omega optical that is the resonance frequency of the cavity is given by this expression n pi c divided by l because of the fact that the mirror is displaced by a small amount x this one we can write using the taylor series expansion n pi by c l into 1 minus x by l and this particular term we can write it as omega optical when there is both the mirror will fixed or not moving so we have this particular term and that's how uh, we are getting uh, this one right so this is basically a function of x so i hope you are getting the idea now the second term here this refers to the decay of the amplitude of the photon and this particular term this term takes the laser drive into account so this takes the laser drive into account because the laser drive is a classical field uh, that is varying say cosinusoidally or sinusoidally so this takes the laser field into account and this particular parameter alpha max here indicates the fact that the value of this alpha will settle down to the value of alpha max at a resonance frequency i think this issue would be clear soon uh, as you will see okay so the amplitude of the laser drive uh, is characterized by giving the amplitude of the light field inside the cavity at resonance by this alpha max all right now we can get rid of this time dependence by going over to a rotating frame of reference so take the answers to get rid of time dependence to to get rid of time dependence in the equation for the light mode uh, take the answers take answers that means actually we are going over to a rotating frame of reference we are just changing the frame of reference and that's what that's the reason we are taking this answer so we'll take alpha of t is equal to say it is rotating in the laser uh, with frequency say omega l t and there is a new variable let me define that is alpha nu of t now if we uh, put this answers in the equation here in this equation okay you can do it and if you do that you will see please do that and you will see that you will get alpha dot nu is equal to i omega l minus omega optical that's the resonance frequency omega l is the laser frequency and this is 1 minus x by l these are very straightforward calculation if you take your pen and paper you will be able to see it very easily it's very trivial and you will have kappa by 2 here it is the new variable alpha nu uh, plus kappa by 2 alpha max in the process as you see in this equation now we are getting uh, rid of the explicit time dependence now rather than keeping alpha nu we are going to rename it again alpha nu to alpha okay uh, so then we can rewrite this equation by this one so we'll have alpha dot okay in the rotating frame we are now having i into omega l minus omega optical 1 minus x by l 
then this is alpha minus kappa by 2 alpha plus kappa by 2 alpha max so this is what we are having now we can define a parameter called the detuning parameter so we will define detuning parameter detuning parameter say delta denoted by delta is equal to omega l the laser frequency minus the resonance frequency of the cavity uh, then uh, then we will have we will be able to write this equation as alpha dot is equal to i into uh, we'll have delta plus omega optical into x by l as you can see very easily from the equation into alpha minus kappa by 2 alpha plus kappa by 2 alpha max so this is what we'll have now you see in the absence of coupling uh, when uh, uh, to the mechanics uh, we need to solve in the absence of coupling this term would not be there okay let us write in the absence of coupling in the absence of coupling we need to solve we need to solve okay so let me just actually why i'm doing it i just want to uh, show you the significance of this term alpha max so in the absence of coupling i just have to solve alpha dot is equal to i delta alpha minus kappa by 2 alpha plus kappa by 2 alpha max and in the steady state because uh, you know decay term will ultimately lead to the steady state in the steady state in the steady state uh, you will have alpha dot is equal to zero for say alpha is equal to some value alpha bar which is the steady state value so if you put it in this equation here then you will get i delta alpha bar minus kappa by 2 alpha bar plus kappa by 2 alpha max is equal to zero and from here you can immediately find out the steady state value of alpha which is very trivial you can get it would be kappa by 2 alpha max divided by uh, r kappa by 2 minus i delta or i can simply write it as alpha max divided by 1 minus i delta divided by uh, kappa by 2 now as you see what i said earlier that right at resonance so this implies that right at resonance right at resonance that is when the detuning parameter is exactly equal to zero or the laser frequency matches the resonance frequency we have alpha bar is equal to alpha max okay so that's the significance of the term alpha max also you can see that if we plot uh, the intensity of the light field steady state intensity of the light field that means as a function of the detuning parameter that means if i take mod alpha bar square and uh, here if i plot delta then i will i will get a lorenzian and uh, so you will you will get a plot like this kind of a plot you will get a lorenzian and the width of this full width at half maximum would be given by the per kvd decay rate kappa now in order to analyze this equation of motion due to mechanics and light field or light mode uh, we'll assume that the coupling between the light field and the mechanics will lead to only a small deviation around the equilibrium by the way some of you may be uh, puzzled uh, that how this particular term for the radiation pressure force is coming let me just quickly remind you again let me take you back to the basic as you remember that when we talked about radiation pressure force the momentum exerted by a single photon 
on the movable mirror the change in momentum due to a single photon was twice h cross k and if there are n number of photons then the total momentum change would be twice h cross k into n divided by the time so this is the rate of change of momentum that's the force radiation pressure force this i can further write as uh, you know k is equal to omega by c uh, so omega by c and time is equal to uh, one round trip time would be 2 l divided by c and n is uh, quantum mechanically speaking it is your photon number so it is a dagger a now in the classical limit as you know already that a is replaced by alpha and a dagger would be replaced by alpha star so you immediately you see that i can write f radiation this radiation pressure force would be h cross omega by l uh, mod alpha square i hope it is clear to you okay let me uh, proceed further so the idea is now to solve for the steady state okay so the idea is solve for the steady state steady state and linearized linearize around the steady state linearize around the linearize around the around the steady state around the steady state and ask for the solutions basically so what we are going to find is that the light field modifies the mechanical behavior resulting in effects like optomechanical damping which we discussed qualitatively earlier now we'll see that quantitatively and also the so-called optical spring effect that is the light induced frequency shift of the mechanical oscillator so what we are going to do now we are going to enter into the domain of what is called or what is known as the linearized optomechanics so we are going to discuss let me explain what i mean by that more clearly you see say we have this system suppose we have a system and in our case our system is a mechanical oscillator or the mechanical system so in our case the mechanics because we are focused to uh, what this mechanical system is doing or, or the mechanical oscillator and generally the system is coupled to a bath or the environment so it is coupled coupling to a bath or environment let us say bath and in our case our bath is the optical cavity that is the driven optical cavity the optical cavity you know it is driven by laser field from outside so our system is the mechanics and uh, bath is the driven optical cavity and they are getting coupled to each other by this so called radiation pressure force okay so we are going to look for uh, some the same kind of effect for the mechanical system the kind of we get uh, when a particle moves through a crystal lattice uh, you know when a particle moves through a crystal lattice it distorts the crystal lattice and acquires a dif different mass the so-called effective mass so similar kind of uh, effect uh, analogous effect we are uh, going to expect only thing here is that so that we can go into the domain of linearized optomechanics we will assume that coupling is weak so we are going to assume that this coupling between the bath and the system or the mechanics and the driven optical cavity uh, we are going to assume that coupling is weak coupling is weak okay and and also what we are going to do we are going to uh, write this parameter now alpha this alpha is is getting deviated from the steady state by an amount say delta alpha t and this mechanics this displacement is deviated from its steady state value x bar 
by an amount delta xt okay so this is very important so here alpha bar let me re repeat again that alpha bar and x bar are the steady state solutions while this delta alpha t and delta x of t uh, are the corresponding deviations from the steady state now the dynamics of the system is going to be modified due to the coupling to the bat and uh, one uh, way is to do it uh, basically to linearize it what we are going to do are the following steps that we are going to adopt first of all let me just write here the steps that we are going to do first step is solve for steady state solve for alpha bar and x bar in that case you just have to put alpha dot is equal to zero in the steady state alpha dot would be equal to zero and x dot would be equal to zero okay and then in the second step we are going to look for look for the first order look for the first order parts of the i think it will be more clearer as we will do the calculation look for the first order parts of the equation of motion equation equations of motion okay let us assume that we already know now we'll do the calculations but let us assume assume that we already we already know alpha bar and x bar okay let us assume now first look at the equation of motion for the mechanics if i okay we have uh, i have already written down the equation of motion for the mechanics so let me just copy it from here and uh, then let me uh, then x i am going to so i am going to replace this x by x bar plus delta x and i will able to I'll be able to get an equation for delta x because steady state you know x it's a steady state it's a constant value so if i take the double derivative it will go to zero and you can anyway put and then you will be able to get this equation of motion for this deviation part so that would be m delta x double dot plus m gamma delta x dot plus m omega capital omega square delta x uh, dot okay i think or only 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 sorry you will just have only m omega square delta x here and this would be equal to h cross omega by l and you will have similarly you are replacing alpha by alpha bar plus delta alpha so mod alpha square is actually alpha into alpha star so if you put that you are going to keep the term up to first order only so you will have alpha uh, star delta alpha plus alpha bar delta alpha star okay complex conjugate basically so this is what you are going to get this is for the mechanics part and similarly if you do that for the light part you will get delta alpha dot is equal to i delta delta alpha plus i actually you will uh, get it uh, more if you take your pen and paper and do the calculations along with me so it's very straightforward so you'll get here x bar delta alpha plus alpha bar delta x minus kappa by 2 delta alpha so this is the equation of motion for the deviated uh, light mode okay so this is what you are going to get so as you see 
as you can see from these equations that the driving term vanishes as it is already taken into account while finding the steady state you remember earlier we have found out the steady state value of alpha bar here you see uh, this we worked out earlier and here the this driving term was actually included there uh, through this alpha max term so therefore this term is not uh, appearing explicitly in this equation of motion so now what we can do uh, we can further write this equation of motion little bit let me write down the equation of motion for the light mode delta alpha dot is equal to i into delta plus omega optical by l delta alpha plus i omega optical by l uh, i'll have alpha bar delta x minus kappa by 2 delta alpha is equal to i delta bar okay i will explain what is delta bar here is that is then i have delta alpha plus i omega optical by l alpha bar that's the steady state value of the light mode delta x here minus kappa by 2 delta alpha and here this delta bar is delta this detuning parameter is now getting modified due to the coupling to the mechanics that is omega optical by l into x bar so now the idea is to eliminate now what we are going to do now eliminate okay now eliminate the light field light field dynamics and i will explain what i mean by this light field dynamics and then and then plug the plug the solutions and i will we'll see how to do that plug the solutions into the equation of motion for the mechanics okay so this is what now we are going to do that means uh, we will write we will write delta alpha this light field in terms of in terms of delta x okay by the way finally what we will want we want to study the this is our core goal we want to study we want to study the response of the system study the response of the system response of the system that is our in this case our mechanical system mechanical oscillator we want to study the response of the system to an external force to an external force say capital f denoted by f so we will now we are going to add it to the um, equation of motion for the mechanics so equation of motion for the mechanics already i have written here and this part was coming due to the radiation pressure force which is intrinsic to the system uh, into but now apart from that now we are going to add a external force to it so the equation of motion that i'm going to write here would be m delta x double dot plus m gamma delta x dot plus m capital omega square delta x uh, is equal to h cross omega by l alpha st star delta alpha plus alpha bar delta alpha star and we are now going to add this external force okay i hope you are getting the idea because we want to study the response of the system uh, to this external force that's the reason we are adding this particular term there now what we are going to do we can solve these equations 
uh, very easily if we if we go to the Fourier space. So let us go over to the frequency domain now. So let us go over to frequency domain. Frequency domain. If we go over to the frequency domain, in the frequency domain already you know that in the frequency domain, uh, say if you have uh, say delta t is there. Okay, let me remind you what you can easily say if you say delta t or d dt. So if you say d of dt is there, then you replace it by i omega. If d to dt double time derivative is there, then you replace it by minus omega square and so on. So we will now go over to the frequency domain. Take the equation of motion for the light mode that is delta alpha dot is equal to i delta bar delta alpha plus i into omega optical by l alpha bar delta x minus kappa by 2 delta alpha in the frequency domain we can write it as minus i omega let me take this into the left hand side minus i delta bar and also this one let me take into the left hand side then i will have plus kappa by 2 now we are writing it in the frequency domain so i have delta alpha of omega and on the right hand side we will have i omega optical by l alpha bar delta x of omega now let us define the cavity response through a susceptibility parameter say uh, chi c if i define a parameter cavity susceptibility if i say i am just defining it say let me define this particular parameter actually if i define chi c as 1 divided by minus i omega minus i delta bar plus kappa by 2 then we can then write this expression delta alpha of omega is equal to uh, i will have it as chi c of omega that is the susceptibility corresponding to the cavity into i omega optical by l alpha bar and i have delta x omega so basically it this susceptibility parameter gives you the idea that how the light field is getting modified due to the mechanics as a response to the mechanics how the light field is getting deviated from its steady state so that's the whole idea okay now consider the equation of motion for the mechanics let me rewrite the equation of motion for the mechanics we had m delta x double dot plus m capital gamma delta x dot plus m omega square delta x is equal to h cross omega optical by l i have here alpha bar star delta alpha plus alpha bar delta alpha star and now we are having also this external force now if we write this thing in the frequency domain we will have minus m omega square plus m capital this omega square minus i m gamma uh, omega okay uh, then this is in the frequency domain i have delta x of omega and on the right hand side i have all these terms h cross omega optical by l alpha bar star delta alpha now it is in the frequency domain and then i have alpha bar delta alpha star 
again in the frequency domain and this force also in the frequency domain okay now if i substitute the expression for delta alpha here you have this expression here now let me substitute delta alpha omega and its complex conjugate using this expression here and if we do that okay so what i'm doing now in the next step i'm going to substitute delta alpha omega is equal to i write say chi c of omega i omega optical by l alpha bar delta x of omega okay then uh, what we'll have i'm going to write but before that while i do that we have to use these facts that delta alpha star of omega if i take the complex conjugate that means the fourier transform of the complex conjugate of this uh, function this is equal to the fourier transform of the function delta alpha evaluated at frequency minus omega and then if you take the complex conjugate so this thing you can exploit because alpha is a complex quantity on the other hand uh, there is no issue with uh, the displacement parameter because displacement parameter is a real quantity here and using this uh, facts uh, we can re rewrite our equation of motion for the mechanics and uh, we'll be write uh, this delta alpha omega we can write in terms of now mechanics so if we it is very straightforward calculations if you have pen and paper with you we can do it uh, very easily let me now write it so what you are going to get is, is as follows you will get minus m omega square plus m capital this omega square and then you have i m omega this parameter gamma here dissipation parameter gamma and i have delta x of omega okay this is basically the same thing i'm writing now on the right hand side using this facts i will have h cross omega optical by l please verify yourself these are straightforward calculations but uh, we may make mistake while doing it please verify it uh, yourself so this is what you are going to get you will have chi c of omega minus chi c this complex conjugate evaluated at minus omega and you will have delta x of omega plus f of omega all right so this is what we will have rather than writing this lengthy expression all the time let me name it uh, as a function a, a name let me say denote it by capital k omega then i will have this term as k omega delta x of omega plus f of omega okay now okay by the way this expression is very important it and it has its physical meaning we are going to discuss k of omega is equal to h cross omega optical by l whole square i into mod alpha square uh, i have chi c of omega minus chi c star evaluated at minus omega so this is what we have now previously if you recall in our discussion related to fluctuation dissipation theorem we define this mechanical susceptibility parameter chi xx of omega is equal to 1 divided by m into capital omega square minus small omega square minus i m omega gamma okay now this guy is the same as this one so therefore i can further write uh, the equation for the mechanics as chi xx of this inverse here uh, omega delta x of omega what i am doing here i am just rewriting this expression i am replacing it by chi uh, this one okay and on the right hand side i have k of omega delta x of omega 
plus f of omega and from here i can now read the this displacement parameter deviation from the steady state for the mechanics we have delta x of omega is equal to f of omega divided by chi xx this is inverse omega minus k of omega this thing i can write as chi effective this is effective mechanical susceptibility into f of omega where this chi effective of omega this effective mechanical susceptibility parameter is simply it is equal to 1 divided by mechanical susceptibility when it is not coupled to the light and i have this k of omega okay so this expression that i have got here is extremely important and we are going to derive the physics quantitatively out of it now you see clearly if there is no light field then we will go back to the linear response of the mechanic mechanical oscillator because if there is no light field then k of omega would be equal to zero because as you see k of omega this mod alpha square term will go to zero because there is no light field and in that case we will go over to the usual damped uh, mechanical harmonic oscillator now because of the fact that the mechanics is now getting coupled to the light field this susceptibility parameter is basically getting modified and we are having an effective mechanical susceptibility now we are going to understand the consequence of this equation particularly due to the presence of this parameter k of omega now we will discuss the physical significance or meaning of this parameter capital k of omega let me write once again that this term is entering into our discussion via this expression where delta x of omega is equal to 1 divided by susceptibility of the mechanical system when it is not getting coupled to the uh, light in fact inverse of the mechanical susceptibility minus this capital of omega and we have this external force and overall whole thing can be written as effective susceptibility parameter into f of omega let us assume that the intensity of the light is small assume that intensity of light is small and that means mod alpha square is small and it means that the coupling is also coupling is also small coupling to the coupling between mechanics and uh, light is also small and in fact this will easily give us uh, the meaning of the parameter k of omega because in that case k of omega is a small correction term only let us look at the vicinity of the resonance look at the vicinity of the resonance frequency that means we will analyze the thing near the resonance frequency say omega small omega is nearly equal to capital omega now if we look at the denominator of this expression here uh, we will compare k of omega just focus on the denominator of the expression here this expression and we will compare k of omega with this inverse of the mechanical susceptibility parameter term by term okay and you will see that this is going to give us the physical significance of this term and we will be able to get the meaning now 
this mechanical susceptibility parameter the inverse is a simple expression which already we know that is m into capital omega square minus omega square minus i m omega capital this is the gamma parameter that's the dissipation parameter now if we look at the imaginary part of this inverse susceptibility parameter then you will see that this is very simple this is simply equal to minus i m actually because i'm just taking the in uh, imaginary part uh, so i'll just write minus m omega gamma now near the resonance frequency so imaginary part of this inverse susceptibility parameter near the resonance frequency is equal to minus m capital omega this parameter gamma so this means that uh, again this is critical to look at the term in the denominator here so if you compare this what it it means that if k of omega has an imaginary part okay because of this minus sign you'll see this will imply that there is an extra uh, damping term uh, of course up to some prefactor so therefore uh, from this logically we see that if this term k capital k has an imaginary part non-zero uh, term near this resonance frequency i we can write here plus because you see in the denominator here this is the minus term is there so i will write a plus term and plus m of omega and then we'll have delta uh, gamma parameter um, so let me repeat again if you uh, are not clear what i am saying is that because we see that inverse susceptibility parameter its imaginary part is related to the damping parameter gamma and now if the parameter capital k has an imaginary part then what it basically means is that there is an extra damping because of the imaginary part of the capital k term uh, the damping is going to further enhance and this enhancement is given by this factor delta gamma of course it is multiplied by say m uh, omega then what we will uh, have is this so if we compare both sides that means we have delta gamma and this is the extra damping parameter that is coming due to the coupling to the light field so we can write it is as optomechanical damping gamma optica opt opto and this is equal to 1 divided by m into omega and imaginary part of k evaluated at near the resonance frequency so what we see is that physically speaking the imaginary part of the uh, this term capital k is this related to the extra damping parameter okay and which is induced due to the coupling to the mechanics so the mechanical system is going to get damped or its temperature is going to get reduced because of its coupling to the uh, light that's what it means now let us look at the real part of again in the similar way if we now look at the real part of this susceptibility parameter the inverse parameter that is simply m into capital omega square minus small omega square now near the resonance near the resonance we can write the real part okay this is the real part of the inverse susceptibility parameter and the resonance uh, this susceptibility near the resonance frequency we can write it as m uh, twice m omega into omega capital omega minus small omega because omega square minus omega square i can write it as capital omega minus omega into 
omega plus omega because this is nearly equal so i am writing it as twice omega that's how this two omega term is coming multiplied by m is there and omega minus uh, capital omega minus small omega so if there is a uh, change in the resonance uh, due to the coupling so that means we have say resonance frequency is changed from omega to delta omega then i can uh, write this as simply delta omega right or this term i can simply write it as delta omega okay if i do that this means that if there is a real part in k of omega this will lead to extra frequency shift uh, up to some prefactor so again we have that real part of this parameter k near the resonance frequency we can give it a meaning and i will write it as minus twice m omega and this extra frequency shift and why i am writing it minus because uh, of the fact that we are in the denominator here we are having this sign minus is there and that's how i'm now putting it uh, that's the reason i'm putting the minus sign here and this implies that delta omega this frequency shift is equal to minus 1 divided by twice m omega and this would be real part of k evaluated near the resonance frequency okay so what you see that the real part of k is related to the frequency shift on the other hand imaginary part is related to the uh, extra damping so we get essentially two important result out of it we get an extra damping term because of this analysis in fact the imaginary part of the parameter k is related to extra damping parameter and this is one expression we get okay this is the imaginary part of 1 by m omega into imaginary part of k evaluated near resonance frequency on the other hand we get delta omega the extra frequency shift that is minus 1 by twice m omega real part of k evaluated at uh, resonance frequency so these are the two important results we obtained and uh, in the next class we are going to analyze the expression for k omega in details let me stop here for today in this lecture we have discussed the classical regime of cavity quantum optomechanics and we saw that uh, coupling between the light and mechanics when the coupling is weak we can go over to the linearized optomechanics regime our classical analysis led us necessarily to the fact that we'll end up with having a extra frequency shift of the mechanical oscillator as well as an extra damping in the next lecture we'll uh, build up on this issue we'll discuss more about it and also we are going to discuss a very important topic uh, needed for cavity optomechanics that is the so-called Langevin equation formalism and we'll first start with the so-called classical Langevin equations. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you.